There was a time in Africa when animals walked with confidence as giants of the land, masters at adapting to any change. It was a system driven as much by the birth of new life as it was hinged on death. This was the essence of the old Africa of novels and films, a harsh tapestry of abundance, hardship, and violence. During these bloody battles, the balance of life gives both predators and prey a chance to win. For millions of years, mankind has been part of that system, hunting for survival and eating flesh for sustenance. But one strange characteristic now sets our species apart. Some say it is language or the capacity to be overwhelmed by emotions. But the real difference is as haunting as the images of our dreams. Only one species kills its victims for its horns or teeth. Only man slaughters for trade, leaving in its wake not only death, but suffering. But there are also those who can no longer bear to watch the devastation, and now seek to hunt down the hunters. Now, members of the same species do battle among themselves to save or kill the other species. The opponents are the poachers of Africa, and they are pursued by Botswana's wildlife warriors. The conservation world in Botswana was suddenly shaken awake. The death of the last black rhino to be seen in this country shocked officials into calling for help. The army moved in. At its helm is General Ian Kama, son of Botswana's founder and first president. His response was immediate. This was rapidly becoming a wildlife emergency, and he started deploying his men against the poachers. The new battlefield for this country, with fewer than one and a half million inhabitants, is carved out of the Kalahari Desert in southern Africa. Botswana's long international borders can easily be breached. It was in the north that poaching had exploded, burning like a wildfire, unchecked through the wilderness. As a conservationist, this new attack boiled inside General Kama. There was outrage when that black rhino was shot. Symbolized for us the arrival of serious poaching. There came a time when we couldn't just stand by and watch our natural heritage disappear. We had to do something. Tracking down poachers is really difficult. I mean, you can defend towns and strategic points in a country, but to defend a wilderness, how do you do that? So we employed everything we had available and developed our experience. Initially, we put 30 men into patrol, but soon realized that this was a much bigger problem and so had to increase our presence. Today, we have nearly 900 well-trained men in the field. <laughs> 